create this model of a chair. This is an example of using the box model where you create the model from a single cube by extruding all the parts of the model, the legs, the back, and you use the subdivision modifier. This tutorial is taken from a book by Roland Hess called The Essential Guide to Learning Blender. To make the base of the chair I'm going to alter the dimensions of the cube, the scale of the cube I'm going to set in the X scale to be 4, the Y scale to be 4 and the Z scale to be 0 0.5. Now I'm going to add the modifier, the subdivision modifier. Now the main parameter with the subdivision modifier is the number of uh, subdivisions to perform. Now to have a closer look at this I'm going to go out of quad view. For this box modeling I won't be using quad view. I'm going to uh, have a sort of three-quarter angle slightly from above and I'm going to zoom in on that. I did that by dragging the middle mouse button followed by the mouse wheel. Now as you increase the number of subdivisions you get more and more polygons. That affects rendering time. If you want to use this model uh, real-time animated in a game you would need ver as few polygons as possible if you wanted photorealism you'd want a lot of polygons for this demonstration I'm going to set this value to be 4 now I'm going to go into edit mode and we see our original cube and then in the middle the model the mesh having the modifier applied. Now the modifier knocks the corners off the cube and smooths it. We want to put some of the corner back in. To do that we use loop cut and slide. As I click that, if I come to one of the sides of the cube that runs parallel with the y-axis I get a perpendicular cut parallel with the x-axis and if I come around and come up to an edge that runs parallel with the x-axis I get a perpendicular cut which is parallel to the y-axis. I want to do two cuts uh, parallel with the x-axis. Now I click and then we're in slide mode. Now as soon as you go into slide mode uh, I'm looking now at this number here, edge slide percent. I want to set it to 0.990% for all sides. The main thing to watch for is if it goes negative. Now, at the moment it's positive. I've released the mouse and I'm typing 0.9 and pressing enter. And I'm going to repeat that, loop cut and slide click to start going to slide mode. Have a look. Now that is minus down there at the moment. So I'm hitting minus 0.9. Pressing enter. Loop cut and slide. Now parallel to the y-axis. Click. I'm in slide mode. Look to see if it's negative. It is. So I'm hitting minus 0.9. Enter. And finally loop cut and slide parallel to the y-axis. As I slide down it's negative so I want minus 0.9. Enter. Now I'm going to repeat the process using a value of 0.8 or 80% so loop, cut and slide and come down the bottom and look to see if it's negative. It's not. It's positive so I just type in 0.8 and enter. Loop cut and slide. Click, slide, minus 0.8 and enter. Loop cut and slide. Click, slide, that's 0.8 and enter. 
and finally loop cut and slide click slide it is negative minus 0.8 and enter okay why did I add the extra loop cuts if I go into top view we can see that we've created uh, these vertices, if I go into face select mode, uh, we've got four faces now that we can select and extrude to make the chair, uh, chair or table legs and the chair backs. Okay, so how do we do that? If I go into view front, uh, that's the top of the chair or top of the table, so I'm going to flip this right over, I'm dragging with the middle mouse button, Flip it right over. I'm going to select the four faces. Now I have to hold down Shift to select the other three. I'm going to press E to extrude. Now I automatically get it constrained in the Z direction, which is what we want. And I'm going to press a numeric value 6 and Enter. And there we have four chair or table legs the subdivision modifier has uh, taken all the corners off so we get these very curved legs so how do we square them up same again loop cut and slide so I select that click to slide have a look down here to see if it's negative. If it's negative, put a minus sign in. If it isn't, don't. So I'm going to put 0.95. I'm going to go very near the end of that one. Loop, cut, and slide. Click, slide up. That's gone negative, so minus 0.9. Enter. Loop, cut, and slide. I'm going to do this for each of the legs. Loop, cut, and slide. Is it negative? No. 0.95 at the bottom. And I'm going to go for 0.9 at the top. Is it negative? Yes. Minus 0.9. And quickly do the other two legs. Slide. Is it negative? No. 0.95. Enter. And slide. Is it negative? Yes. Minus 0.9. Enter. Last leg. Slide down, is it negative? No. 0.95, enter. And loop cut, cut and slide, go up, is it negative? Yes. Minus 0.9, enter. A chair or table with perfectly perpendicular legs would not be very stable. To make it more stable, we need to splay the legs. Now, there's several ways you could do this, but a clever way of doing it is as follows. Make sure you're in face select mode. Select the bottom ends of the legs. Hold down shift for the other three. Now if I press uh, S to scale uh, we can push the legs out but they would also make the ends of the legs bigger. So how can we prevent that? Well, there's this button here, Manipulate Object Centers Only. If we select that and press S to scale, and we can push the legs out without increasing the size of the ends of the legs, but it's we have got another problem. It's not spreading down the mesh to move the entire leg. So how can we do that? Uh, the answer is put proportional editing on. So if I click this and enable proportional editing, um, it's by default on smooth. That works fine, but I'm going to put it onto linear. Now when we uh, press S to scale, I'm going to enter a, a numeric value, a scale of factor of 1.1. Now it's still uh, bending the legs a bit, so if I move the mouse wheel, the proportional editing increases and it the effect spreads back down the mesh and we want to go all the way down the leg but not to the base. If I go too far the base starts to be scaled and I don't want that I just want the legs 
uh, to be splayed and about there if I press enter we have splayed legs there's one more thing we can do to the legs while the ends are selected and that's taper them now I'm going to alter the geometry this time so I don't want this button pressed so I click it again I don't want proportional editing so I'm going to disable that now if I scale normally it would scale about the midpoint between the four faces I don't want that I want to scale about the individual center of the faces so I select individual origins I then press S to scale I'm going to enter a numeric value I'm pressing 0.5 and enter and it's tapered all the ends now that's all I'm going to do for uh, the legs of the chair or table now I just get that so that uh, the X is pointing that way and 